Thank you for calling calling to the approaching call screener line. Please enter your show or meeting number and press now. Entering Natty State Studio, the sports media palace of Mid America, the Wolf of Center Street. Here's your host, John Neighbor. And welcome into the John Neighbor Show here live from Natty State Sports Studios. Appreciate each and every one of you listening in and watching in on this beautiful day here in the great state of Arkansas. I am your host, John Neighbors, and appreciate each and every one of you for listening and watching in and making us a part of your afternoon this afternoon as it is going to be a really, really great Friday here on the show. So, uh, Get into all the things that are happening on the show today. And I know we're going to have former Razorback Tyler Spoon uh, joining us. Talk a little Razorback baseball as they get geared up for a series against the Alabama Crimson Tide coming up this weekend in Tuscaloosa. So uh, we'll talk to him about pretty much everything. Normally it's a Wednesday, but because of certain circumstances that ended up being kind of a big deal, we decided to say, you know what, let's go ahead and have him in on a Friday. So we look forward to catching up with him. And uh, once we do that, uh, it'll be a lot of fun, too, just to get his uh, thoughts also on the Cal Perry situation, because I'm sure he'll have a little bit to say about that. But we'll we'll have that. And we will also get into some of your uh, phone calls and some of your text messages and messages itself and get your reaction to here on an easy Friday show. Some football news, too. Uh, not major news, but they're, it, it's apparently called the red white game tomorrow. That's what the email said. I thought it was a spring game. Spring scrimmage, spring practice, red-white game. I, it doesn't matter. It's happening tomorrow. So uh, besides that, though, there was some pretty interesting news that ended up happening for the Razorback football team, which we'll talk about as well. But as you see in the caption, and uh, what really is this show today is going to be all about, has to do with, once again, Cal Perry. I mean, that's the hot topic. It's what everybody wants to know about and hear about. Uh, I think that if I was in arm's reach of a lot of you Razorback fans, you'd want to choke me out like Homer does to Bart Simpson and saying, when is the next recruit going to commit? Or when is the five stars going to be happening? Well, just uh, relax. Uh, it'll come in time. There will be a roster put forth. And who knows? Maybe during the show today, there may even be some big announcement or some big pop-off. But just be patient because it may end up happening and may end up uh, transpiring. But what I wanted to, to get kind of dive into today was specifically about kind of what you see. Arkansas is now where the cool kids go. Now, it's a, it's a kind of a cliche, funny switcheroo on how it's viewed, at least in Razorback fandom, of how Calipari has really added in a cool factor to Arkansas. And I'm not saying that Arkansas basketball has never been cool, folks. Don't get me wrong. But there is an element to the allure, to the intrigue of what Cal Perry is bringing to Arkansas, and especially knowing who uh, Kentucky ended up hiring officially, which we'll talk about that too, and just doesn't really bring in the same vibe, the same juice. But I saw a few former players of Cal Perry talking to media, doing podcasts and whatnot, discussing some of the reactions that they have their thoughts and opinions on okay so now that he's at Arkansas how do we feel about this well some of them are mixed some are kind of like yeah you know I'm, I'm still a Kentucky guy I think I've seen saw John Wall talk about it and say hey I'm, I'm big on Kentucky and you know I hope they get a good coach I'm still gonna ride with them and everything and I also saw a, a response there from <laughs> Boogie Cousins where he went into more in-depth saying, hey, now, now that Cal's at Arkansas, Arkansas is going to be where all the recruits go. It's going to be where all the players go. It's where all the celebrities are going to go. And, uh, I mean, I don't know if that was really him talking more so about Arkansas, more so about Cal. But still, there is a, a certain cool element to it. And some of you probably look at that like, well, who cares? Since when has cool ever won you games? Since when, you know, I mean, that's what's really cool is winning games. And you're right. You're right. Winning is very cool, but how do you get to be a winner? How do you get to the point to where you have a winning program, a winning tradition, a winning vibe? Well, you got to get great players in. We all know that, first and foremost. I don't care what anybody says. 
the most successful pr- programs and even in Arkansas history, the most successful teams you've ever had has been what? When you've had the most talented players. I don't know where it all came from for people thinking that, oh, well, you know, back in Nolan Richardson when he was the coach, it wasn't really that many talented players. It was, you know, Corliss, Scotty, and then just a bunch of ragtag dudes. Again, not true and not the case. You had a lot of talent on that team. Not only Jeff Corliss and Scotty, but Corey Beck was a player who played in the NBA. You had two seven-footers that were five-star freshmen coming out of high school that were on that team. Sure, you had some you know, little hidden gems that you may find, like an Al Dillard, but overall, the talent level was there. And I know that I was not into the college basketball landscape back in the early mid-90s because I was barely alive. But I do know of people I've talked to, and especially people outside the state of Arkansas, a lot of them remember Arkansas Razorback basketball. Why? Well, winning, of course. But why? They were cool. They were one of the few programs that had the baggier, longer shorts. Their style and how they played, where it was suffocating defense, full-court press, running up and down the court. It was fun. It was exciting. It was a high-octane type of offense and defense. And it brought a lot of people in there and brought a lot of people in that may normally have never even known anything about the state of Arkansas, but they're like, well, this basketball team's pretty fun. And their coach, Nolan Richardson, he has cowboy boots out there. You know, he's got a big booming voice. He's very intense. You know, there's just certain elements to it that made it a cool place to be. And they also won, which is, again, the coolest thing ever. But with now, it's, it's a new era with John Calipari, to where everyone's been talking about you this week. We know that. We don't need to rehash that. But everyone's been talking about you this week. And you're about to have a roster that's going to be formulated, that's going to be filled with kids that more often than not wouldn't have even considered Arkansas. They love Coach Cal. Coach Cal has a great resume. He's won a national championship. He's been to six Final Fours. He's had a winning tradition. But we all know that Cal Perry is larger than just a basketball coach. He's bigger than any basketball coach. There's a reason why he has a million and a half followers on Twitter and at least claims that he doesn't even have a laptop. But why? I mean, it's not like he's just super savvy on Twitter or his staff is just, you know, putting together all these crazy viral videos and tweets and stuff. It's because he is a larger-than-life personality that just happens to be a basketball coach. And as a basketball coach, he's pretty successful, just being honest. But you're entering into a stage of Arkansas that you haven't been to in a while. I think Arkansas was, you know, cool, fine, whatever, must. I think that the forward-thinkingness, it's not a word, I made it one, of what Eric Musselman did in marketing and promotion of the program was really a next-level type of deal. People hadn't seen it. A lot of people tried to mimic it. Maybe people weren't as good at it. But for all intents and purposes, it was kind of a fun thing. It was fun. It was enjoyable. But Cal brings cool. And everybody wants to be cool. Everybody wants to be a part of something cool. They want to watch something cool. Cool is cool, no matter what. I keep using the example of what we've seen in sports and especially in the college landscape of places, schools, teams that normally wouldn't be cool or at least wouldn't be given the high-rising, overwhelming attention that is given. But because of one particular individual or a few particular individuals, it brings a coolness to them. I bring up Texas A&M. Honestly, is Texas A&M a cool school? I don't think so. I don't think, I don't mean, how could you? But they had a guy named Johnny Manziel there playing football. And what did Johnny Manziel bring? Heisman Trophy, had some wins here, really electric, big personality, sure. But he was cool. That's why I had Drake at the games. That's why he was hanging out with celebrities, because he was cool. People want to be around cool. That is what's going to be able to open up a lot of opportunities for Razorback basketball that they haven't had before. It's not an insult towards Arkansas. It's not a bad thing at all. 
Arkansas has had success. We know that. But there's only certain people that can roll in, take over as a coach, do the things that Cal Perry has done so far, just in the short span he's done at Arkansas, and have everybody paying attention. Players wanting to play there. Coaches wanting to coach there. The college basketball landscape, talking about it. The national guys who would maybe mention Arkansas in passing. Now they're like, oh, Arkansas? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, we, we like that. They're, they're going to put it together. They're going to have an NBA littered roster that's going to be so exciting and, and so incredible. And uh, we can't wait to see it and, and watch it and be a part of it and want it to succeed because when it succeeds, it means more eyeballs on, on the TV. It's just going to be a domino effect overall. And I can't tell you how many people I have talked to from outside the state of Arkansas that have texted me about Cal Perry. Some of them have been Kentucky people. And they have their own feelings and thoughts. But a lot of people have just been outside of and disconnected from anything Arkansas or Kentucky or even Cal Perry. And they have just brought up, man, the fact that you guys got him, the fact that you guys have this going, the fact that you have all of that to be able to build and to mold and to get excited about and everything, that's something to look forward to. That's what's going to put butts in the seats. Do I know exactly what Cal Perry is going to do in his first year at Arkansas? No, because he doesn't even have a roster. We know that. But I guarantee you Razorback fans, especially those who are season ticket holders right now, if you, if you, were, brought, if you were put forth and they're like, hey, we have no idea what the roster is going to look like. The staff even hasn't been fully assembled just yet. But here's a season ticket. You've got to buy it right here, right now. Are you going to buy it? I bet you you do. Why? There's no team. You have no idea who the roster is. We don't even know what the schedule looks like. We don't know. But you're willing to buy season tickets right now. And I know Arkansas sold out of season tickets the past, was it, three or four years in a row. And they're going to do it more. If they could sell more season tickets, they would have more season tickets sold. There's not many coaches that are able to do that walking into the door. Find me another coach that Arkansas could have hired where they have no roster, the staff has not been assembled, and you would be like, yes, 100%, give me my season ticket right now. I'm willing to pay the money, pay the donation, pay anything it needed to go to a basketball game where the Razorbacks are playing. Not many coaches could do that. So you may say, oh, well, Chris Beard, but it doesn't matter. Cal has done that. That's when you know you have something that people want to see, people want. It, it, it's, it's box office is what it is. It's box office. You're the greatest show in town. People get, line up to see you. There's going to be times, folks, where you're going to play on the road in certain environments that would have a decent crowd, but because it's Arkansas with John Calipari, the crowd size may double because people want to go see it. They want to see a good team, sure. They want to see good players, sure. But it's Cal. It's the Cal effect. It's the Cal effect. I'll go ahead and go out on a limb. You know how much I love going out on those. This upcoming basketball season, Arkansas is going to play a road game against somebody. It doesn't matter who. And they're going to lose. It's college basketball. It happens all the time, mind you. And when they lose... And when they lose this game, guess what? A court storming is going to happen. That's right. This year, it's going to happen. I'd like to be because Arkansas is the number one team in the country. I and mean, they're sitting there undefeated. I don't know, something like 24-0. and And they end up losing by a one point on a bad call by the officials on the road. And that team rushes the court. That's what I'd like. But it's going to happen. You're public enemy number one, Razorback fans. Some people already hated you, but now people really hate you. They really want to beat you. They see your coach over there, Cal Perry, and they see him with all the money he's made, and they see the chicken man, John Tyson, over there with his ball cap looking like me at the age of 60. Just, uh, yeah, waving it around, being like, hey, hey, thanks, man. 
Appreciate it. Yeah, I know I have a lot of money, but I sure don't dress like I do. I'm just a regular guy. They're going to see all that, and they're going to hate it. They're going to hate you. And they're going to do whatever they can to destroy you. If you ever slip up one time, you are going to hear about it, Razorback fans. You are going to get it you lit up on your social media. You are going to get made fun of. You're going to have like, oh, an overrated chance happen. You're going to get all of this stuff that is going on constantly. And you're going to sit there and be like, man, why is this happening? Why am I getting this? Oh, it's because they want to beat us bad. Because we have something they don't. We have attention. We have success. We have winning. We have NBA players. We have support systems. We have energy. And we have Cal Perry. People are going to see that. And they're going to want it. They won't admit it. They won't admit it. But they'll want it. They'll be jealous of it. And they think that you don't deserve it. Because you're little old Arkansas. You don't deserve anything. You don't deserve greatness. Come on. You deserve to sit over there in your little corner and just hang out. You're just that state that's in between the other states that are supposedly better than you. You don't know what it's about. You don't know how it goes. That's how it's going to be. But it's going to be such a fulfilling and satisfying feeling. Don't get mad when people rush the court against you, Hog fans. Don't get mad when everybody comes out against you. Don't get mad when it's the other team's Super Bowl. God, I hate that term. Don't get mad at it, though. Embrace it. Because it means you have something great that other people want, but they can't have. So satisfying. So nice. So great. Either way, folks... We uh, have a lot to talk about. I did. Speaking of disrespect, though, I wanted to give a shout out to our residential chatter caller. I mean, the guy is everywhere, and it's unbiased Bren or unbiased Bren. He he's called in a few times. He's in the chat, and I know he's in the chat right now. And I wanted to, if you don't follow him on social media, you should. But he has done a great job of compiling a list of. The disrespect nationally that has been done towards Arkansas by pundits, by podcasters, by radio show hosts, whatever. And he's done a phenomenal job. So I want to give credit where credit is due. He, he's put this thing together and hopefully he doesn't mind me uh, putting all, yeah, I think he had two, three compilations and I put them all together to show. But he did a great job of it. I want everybody who, if you haven't seen it, which I'm sure you have, but if you haven't seen it, if you haven't watched it, let me show you an example of what people have been saying about Arkansas and the fact that they hired John Calipari. Take a listen. John Calipari to Arkansas? When I read it this morning, I wondered if it was April Fool's Day and not Fuller Eclipse shot, so Day. Yeah. Why would I be lucky at eight and a half million to go to Arkansas? Thank you for calling. Call third to last in the SEC. So. As you said, uh, the bar is low there uh, for Coach Cal to make a difference. Thanks, Pete. When you go to Arkansas, that team has not won a title in 30 years, right? They haven't been to a final since the mid-90s. This is a team where it is going to be a great place if you get to the second round in the first year. John Calipari, a very high-profile basketball coach at one of the highest-profile basketball programs ever, Kentucky, has bailed on that school, and he's going to Arkansas, which is a second- to third-tier program. Which is an age of college sports where we're going to dispense with any of the nonsense and just say, yep, a billionaire booster can just go buy a party <laughs> and all of a sudden make Arkansas matter. More than it has mattered since Nolan Richardson in basketball? Who? When's the last time? Nolan what? Richardson. And I'm even more surprised that it's Arkansas, Mike. I hear what you're saying about NIL money. But to me, Arkansas is a clear step down. Even though they won a national championship with Nolan Richardson, however many years it's ago it. that was. Yeah, Kentucky is one ago. of the five most important college basketball schools in the country, and they have been Easy. for 60 or 70 years. Easy. And I don't know yep. if he's going to like it down there, 
I mean, Brett Bielma left Wisconsin to become a football coach. What was he there for an hour and a half? And if he doesn't get Arkansas back, like, to where it was with Mm. Nolan Richardson, it's going to be like, wait, John Calipari ended his career where? It's going to feel weird. Uh, He'll come back. Why would I leave Kentucky at eight and a half million to go to Arkansas? Number one. Number two, you don't go from Kentucky to Arkansas when we're talking about football. You just, I, I, I'm sorry, basketball. Basketball, yeah. You do it for football, but you don't do it for basketball. Let's just keep it real. Football, maybe, Smitty. Basketball, what? Arkansas ain't been good since Nolan Richardson and Thurman and Corliss Williamson lost to UCLA, my Bruins. They ain't been good since. So why would you go from Kentucky, the team that puts out more NBA talent than anybody, to Arkansas? So, I mean, I, again, the whole thing to me is just so hilarious that it's not just that he was forced to take another job. It's that he's forced to go to Fayetteville freaking Arkansas because he didn't play this properly. Like, if he if he does this and he goes to, you know, to Tennessee or something, or he goes to LSU, like a – you know, a better location. He literally went wow. to maybe the second work. I'd probably put Starkville below it. And whether whether they were Kentucky or not, uh, this team had four guys that could create their own offense. They have lottery picks. They have three seven-footers. They have more talent, the, an embarrassment of talent. Yeah. And that is exactly why this is this is why the sky is officially falling in Lexington is because this was a vintage John Calipari team. Mm-hmm. I said coming into the season, if he f- this up, He's done. He has to be done and not just fired from Kentucky. I think he's done in college basketball. Like, I don't know. Like Michigan is a job that's open. Michigan needs a coach. Michigan, there is a world where John Calipari gets fired from Kentucky and, you know, a school like Michigan's like, hey, man, we'll, we'll take John Calipari. I don't think they should. I think John Cal- I think the game is completely passed him by. I think yeah. he has no idea what he's doing in this, this current. He, he doesn't have a leg up on anybody anymore. How if, if, In a world where everybody can pay everybody and people can transfer, what, what advantage does he have? It's certainly not in-game coaching. Uh, look, I'm blown away that uh, people feel that this guy's worth six, eight million dollars. I've said before, the guy can't coach. He just can't. Let me. Some- yes, this is THV 11. This is about 30 seconds. It is. Let me just show you what they did and how they promoted Calipari yesterday. Are y'all ready for it this? Looks like a, it looks like a middle school. Uh, it's at is. a gym. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, this is absolutely laughable. I'm sorry. Uh, I gotta... They're happy. You're kind of being hard on them. Is it? They're doing it like a starting lineup. Yeah. Well, they're happy. Like this is the goofiest thing I've ever seen for a press conference. That's all I had to. I'm sorry. This it's a is... little sad they couldn't get a better voice guy. I could have done a better one than that. And no. I could have done better than that, dude. No offense to him. Yeah, I totally agree. This is absolutely ridiculous. Um, and I, I just, it's the most insane thing I've ever watched. You are talking about Fayetteville. That's a place that you can pay for your hotels and chickens and pies. So let's keep that. Let's keep that in mind. It is Fayetteville. It's not exactly forward thinking. They're still using the barter system. (laughs) Were you guys surprised John Calipari left Kentucky for Arkansas? Good old Arkansas. Um, (laughs) It's Arkansas, not Arkansas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And, yo, Arkansas, to quote Quinta Brunson, they got money. Yo, that's the thing that they I don't think money. I don't think people understand. That <laughs> you know the, what I'm saying? The booster class. Arkansas, third world country. I guess we don't use that term anymore. <laughs> is it no, a developing nation? No, no, no. <laughs> but, but what I mean by that is the upper level of the income distribution is banana. So you're that's talking about the Tyson chicken people. You're talking about Walt the Walmart Tyson's people. Yep, yep. You're talking about Jerry Jones. Billionaires. Yeah, they have a high level. And then Thanks. everybody else out here. Eating dirt sandwiches, you right, know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's a, <laughs> sugar water, you know, man. Yo, no, it's, it's no lie. Hmm. And you know, I thought the idiots of all sports media were here in Arkansas. Wow. Ah, that is a lot. Thank you again, unbiased brim for putting that compilation together. And folks, if you want to give your reaction to 
said video that was put together, 936-246-2889, is the number to call in for that. You know, here's the thing. We live in a day and age where everybody's always about, oh, well, you know, let's, uh, let's be given hot takes. Let's be crazy. Let's, you know, get, get, get everybody riled up. And, you know, some of those people were national and some of those people were, I guess, local to wherever they were. But what cracked me up about that is it just shows you how many people have literally never been to Arkansas. Like, that's the thing. I don't think I ever trash on a city or trash on a, we'll, we'll stick to college campuses. I don't trash on any place unless I've actually been there. I may make a joke, but to me, I approach it as there's places that may be small, may not have much going on from the outside perspective, but then looking into going there and actually seeing it in person, I may change my mind. It may be awesome. None of those people did that. Some of those people were Tennessee guys, I think, which, okay. And talking about uh, Fayetteville, not very forward thinking. And also, I, I will not accept any John George slander on my show. Guys talking about, oh, I could have done a better voice work. Then why aren't you? Instead, you're doing a podcast inside of, uh, I guess, what your home is, and you're so upset by John Calipari being announced, like, what would you have done differently? Please let me know. Talk about, oh, it looks like a high, it looks like a high school. What are you, high school gym? It's Bud Walton Arena. Like, have y'all, have y'all been to a basketball game? Have you, have you seen? Do you watch college basketball? Like, I just think it's, <clears throat> I think it's hilarious. I think it's funny. It's sad, but it's funny. So, because anybody that ever talks about the the lack of education or intelligence or, or whatever here in the state of Arkansas. Just show that video and it'll make you feel a lot better about yourself as an Arkansan being like, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, the, the idiots are actually outside of these four, four uh, lines of the state, four borders of the state. Those are really the morons. And so it goes back to my original point, folks. People are jealous, people are mad, people are frustrated because you have something that they don't know, they don't, that they want, but they don't understand how you got it, you know? It's kind of like, in their mind, seeing the really ugly guy getting the supermodel girlfriend. You hate it. You're like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can, come on. I'm going to go over there and I'm going I'm to make fun of that guy. I'm going to be like, yeah, get out of here, you moron. This guy just sucks. She needs to get with me, so I'm going to tell you, oh, ha, ha, just laugh and make fun of him. Okay, cool. But guess what? That guy's got the girl you want. You say you don't understand it, and that's what frustrates you. But what it really is is that he has, him and you, he has her and you don't. So I just think, again, it's so funny to me how little people know about Arkansas, Fayetteville, the greatness that comes along with it, the success that comes along with it, the people that are here, the passion that they have, and the setup for success that they do have and continue to have and continue to show. But rest assured, folks, you're going to get the last laugh in all of this. You're going to get the last laugh. But don't let it bother you. You're always going to see it. It's annoying, sure. But these are people that's never been here. Especially the ones that were talking about Fayetteville. person that said, like, outside of Starkville, you know, it's my... Have you been to Fayetteville, my man? I have not been to every SEC city, but if I could guarantee something, like, say what you want about anything else. Of all of the SEC cities, if you're saying that outside of Starkville that Fayetteville is the worst, you have not been here. You have not seen it. You're just being stupid. You're just saying stupid things. And you got people to talk about you for being stupid. So I applaud you. I applaud you. It takes a real man of courage to stand there in front of a camera and a microphone and say dumb things and have such conviction to go along with it too. 
Dadgum near impressive, if you ask me. What a joke. But again, unfortunately, it's not surprising whatsoever. But that's okay. You're the cool school, remember? You're the cool school. Cool school for life is how we're feeling right now. Folks, we'll talk more and uh, get into some of your phone calls and messages here in a second. But I got to tell you about Superior Contracting and Development here in the state of Arkansas. We know that uh, it's getting closer and closer each and every week to get into the summertime. And I know that you are looking to expand a little bit when it comes to your home or maybe inside or outside of it, whatever it may be. Well, with Superior Contracting and Development, they can help you out because they are licensed and residential commercial contractors specializing in all aspects of home building and remodeling. They handle everything from fencing to drainage to additions and remodeling of your existing structure all the way to land development and ground-up construction. Call them today for all of your interior and construction and exterior construction and remodeling needs at 501-453-3053. That's 501-453-3053. You can also email them at contracting at superiorark.com. You'll get real people to talk to. But the best thing about it is they are based in Valonia here in the Natty State but they serve the entire Natty States. No matter where you're at in the state of Arkansas, they can help you out and have you covered. So give Superior Contracting and Development today for all of your interior and exterior construction remodeling needs at 501-453-3053. All right, so let's uh, get to some of your reactions uh, that have been happening here today. And let's start with, I'm going to go to the phone lines. It says... Kobe, but if it's not Kobe, I apologize. But it's from the 479. What's up? Hey, John. Um, I'm watching your show right now. Thanks, man. Um, so I was, I was, I turned on the show when you were talking about how uh, people were saying that Fayetteville is one of the worst places to play sports and, you know, it looks bad. I was just, I was just wanting to, um, say that I moved up to Missouri and I was working in Columbia and I think that is one of the ugliest state capitals I have ever been to in my life. Is, uh, I'm going to be honest. Is Columbia the capital up there? Yes. Ah, well, that's the case. Yeah. I, that, well, that's the thing is like, you could probably name a bunch of cities that like every city's got probably its positives, but you know, Columbia, Missouri, uh, College Station, Texas. I mean, come on. You're talking about Probably. like, like. I mean, I was not a fan of Auburn when I went there. Uh, I was not impressed by Knoxville. Uh, Gainesville's meh, like fine. So I, I don't. I, I mean, Norman, Oklahoma, they're about to join the SEC. They count. Like, come on. So yeah, that was the thing that I was just laughing about more so than anything. I was like, okay, say what you want if you want to just talk noise about Arkansas and the program and everything, but that city, the Fay Fayetteville, I that's where I do take offense to it. Absolutely. I mean, I grew up in I grew up in Tawny Town, which is right outside of Springdale. Um, spent most of my life there between Springdale, Fayetteville, you know, Bentonville. Northwest Arkansas is general in general is probably one of the greatest places you could be especially when you talk about sports and like coach Cal getting to uh, visit with, who was it? Um, John Tyson and uh, who what Walmart, the Waltons. Yeah. I've heard of them. Yeah. That's, I mean, you really can't ask for anything better in my opinion. Well, there's a reason why each and every year that this area, specifically Fayetteville, gets mentioned as one of the best places to live. There's a reason why everyone's moving here. And it's not just because, uh, oh, we hear they got great chicken there. Uh, you know, sometimes you just got to look at the numbers and let the numbers speak for themselves. And Arkansas, and specifically Fayetteville, Northwest Arkansas, the numbers speak for themselves. So I, I just, again, I laugh because it just shows how ignorant some people can be when it comes to what, Arkansas is what they're what's capable of and also what the Northwest Arkansas Fayetteville area is able to provide for people, for families, for jobs, economy, everything. There's not really a downside to it. Absolutely. Well, I don't want to waste any more of your time. I just wanted to voice my opinion and tell you that I really like your show and um, keep doing what you're doing. Hey, appreciate it, man. Thanks for calling in. Call back anytime. Uh, I will say though, by the way, Jefferson city is the capital of Missouri. That's what I thought. Um, I, was like, I don't know, but it's not like 
I could, you know, maybe, I have a buddy of mine that could probably name every single capital city in every state. But either way, uh, yeah, Columbia is not it. That ain't it. And again, I haven't been to all the, I have not been to all of the different campus cities and stuff. It's just so funny to me how people just ride off Arkansas. And then you got the guys like saying Arkansas. I said this before, and I'm going to say it again, folks. Which state was established in the United States first? Arkansas or Kansas? Arkansas was. Arkansas is the 25th state in the United States. I believe Kansas was 32nd. Don't quote me on that. But either way, I know it was done first. So to me, if you're the state that was founded first and established first, the way you pronounce it is the correct way. That's my take. That's my take. All right, let's uh, hear from the man himself, Unbiased Brim, who's calling in. What's going on, man? Good afternoon, John. How about my neighbor? <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'm great now. You you got me all hyped up and, and entertained from the uh, compilation videos you put together, people hating on Arkansas, so I love it. Hey, right, man, that's what it's for. It's supposed to be motivation because, you, know, um, you know, through the course of you know my youth and to now being an older gentleman now, I've always noticed that Arkansas always got a little bit of slant in their coverage, especially if, like when I used to watch ESPN as a kid. It just, I remember the 94 championship when it was said that Duke was the smarter team, right? So I always remember those shade moments. And when I was seeing it, I said, you know what? I want to bring it to light and use it as a form of motivation and for people to understand that, you know, Unfortunately, national media and, you know, some of the other local media has a kind of a slant towards Arkansas and Arkansas Razorback back, back athletics. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to get the fan base involved with it. A lot of people engage. Um, it going to Coach Cal and him seeing it, it's all about having that chip on your shoulder and wanting to, you know, prove people wrong. But just got to remember, we have a bullseye on this, though. So we got to live up to it, too. So, you know, but it, it's beautiful, man. I, I, I definitely appreciate you, you know, putting that on the show. And, um, you know, it's just been some fun times. I haven't went to sleep yet. Something's wrong with me. <laughs> yeah, well, it's there's reasons why. I mean, you're excited about everything. And uh, I know a lot of people have just been, I mean, you can't get enough of it. Can't get enough of uh the, uh, the coolness and the attention that Arkansas is getting. But that's what I've always felt like with Arkansas when people talk about, especially in football, you know, who's Arkansas's rival? If I had a nickel for every time I've been asked that by people outside the state of, oh, well, who's the rival? You know, you have to have LSU, but they're not really a rival. I'm like, you know what? I stopped trying to search for a rival in football, especially. Arkansas hates everybody equally. And I think that that's kind of what it needs to be about. Is like, don't worry about, oh, well, you know, we hate this person more, this team more, this school more. No, no, we just hate everybody equally because guess what? Everybody hates you because they don't respect you. They don't take you seriously. So you're never going to get that respect. So you might as so well just Arkansas hate everybody. The world, right, John? What's that? Is Arkansas versus the world, right? That's right. Arkansas versus the world every single time. I remember when it was Tennessee, though. I mean, not Tennessee, but when it was Texas, though. Cause yeah. I, I, I was I grew up in the old Southwest Conference days, but you know when we changed the SEC, it just you know we had years where it would be a budding rivalry, but then it would change. It was only in intervals, so I don't know. But I want to tell you two things before I hop off because yeah. I know it's other people's call. One, I want to give a shout out to the Arkansas Omaha Hogs because they're the best team in the country, and I want them to continue to work the pitch count. And the pictures are phenomenal. It's just been a joy to, you know, to give us some, you know, outside of this cow, the cow hiring, the baseball team gave us some type of joy because we've had a lot of pain and agony over the last year and year. And um, this was hard for me to do, but for every negative, you want to have a positive. So I am going to be dropping within the next 20 to 30 minutes a positive video on the love we've received. Unfortunately, it's been more hate than love. It took me a little more work to find the love, <laughs> but I'll be dropping that soon too. So I want to make sure I give the positive as well, not just the negative. And John, I appreciate you, man. Keep rocking and rolling and we'll pick Suey. All right. Well, appreciate you on bias, Brim. Thanks for the video and thanks for the kind words and keep up the good work, man. I look forward to seeing the positive video because I know there has been some people that have talked positively about Arkansas. I think Charles Barkley was one of them that uh, talked positive about Arkansas. I think that, uh, like to me, it's like people that actually know college basketball and actually have followed college basketball. 
as weird as it was, I remember watching the field of 68, maybe during the national championship or maybe the pregame, Jeff Goodman kept talking about Arkansas. He's like, people don't understand. Like, it's a great job. It's a great program with a lot of money. So it seems like the people that actually know that it's a great spot and know that it's a winning program that has all that people need to be able to win, then you're good to go. So, again, stick with the ones that people actually know and people actually, you actually can trust and say, okay, well, has this person been here? Have they, have they studied it? But it's, it's the easy route. It's the easy route to just be like, ah, Arkansas, <laughs> boo, you suck. Why? Because I watched the Beverly Hillbillies once, and that's how Arkansas people are. Oh, okay. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate you. It's dumb, but it's funny. Uh, let's go back to the phone lines. I believe this is Greg calling in. What's going on, Greg? Is this Greg? Is it from the 276? Hello? Yeah, is this you, Greg? Yeah, this is me. You got me? I got you, man. What's going on? Oh, I'm on, I'm on air right now. You are on the air. Oh, yeah. Every, millions Exciting. of people can hear you right Exciting. now. Man, you guys, I'm telling you, this is what you're going to expect. for The uh, The first year that we got John at, in Kentucky, we got, you know, that was a, a dream class, the, the DeMarcus Cousins, John Wall. <laughs> you know, we thought it was going to last forever. We absolutely did. You know, after the, I think it was the Elite Eight, uh, the Final Four with Brandon Knight, I think that's when we started. It was every year for the first three or four years we were scared to death because that's when the NBA uh, that's when the NBA offer started coming in for John. I think it was Cleveland Cl the Cavaliers. I think after year two, I think it was like yeah. a fifty million dollar <laughs> offer. I think a few years later, I think the Lakers came in with an eighty million dollar offer. So. Life with John is there's pros and cons. <clears throat> the con was we were constantly scared to death we were going to lose him. Just to be, you know, to be quite blunt, you take a look at these offers that were coming in, and it was you were happy about the results, but at the same time, the flip side was, oh my gosh, you know, how you know how are you going to turn down, especially if you had a team gather with like Randall, you had these super teams gathering with UK players, you just thought that it was just a matter of time before he was going to get lured. And, you know, the speculation was is that he was always wanting to go back to the NBA because of his, uh, his Nets departure. Um, but as I said, you know, after four or five years, you know, you, you just thought that it was going to last forever. And, Anyways, it's just an exciting hire. I mean, I'm really excited for you. I'm almost like tongue tied because it's just so. I know what you guys are going through. It was. It's just. I don't know. It's. It's not. It's only John Calipari can provide this experience that that you're getting, and it's just fantastic. I'm a UK fan, but now I'm going to subscribe to your show because John is just must see TV. Gary Parrish. CBS Sports is probably one of my favorite analysts that has covered John over the last few years. If you go back and listen to, to Gary Parrish's stories, especially, I'm not sure if you remember hearing the story, the John Calipari story of him going into that, into, I think it was City of Palms, but he was looking at a recruit. I think it was the, the speculation it was Mike Cronin. So have you heard this story, John? Hi, I think I know what you're talking about, but you can go ahead and uh, give me the details to it. <laughs> yeah, it was the one where I think it was uh, Marcus Teague was the recruit. That was the yeah. speculation. Louisville had been working him for uh, years, like since he was uh, like a 13 or 14. So he was on the hook for Louisville. John got him. Like it seemed like it was like within three months, John made the he made up the ground, got him committed. 
there was a coach uh, at the uh, the high school uh, invitational that was in the stands that had been apparently had been talking about like you know John swooped in you know something went on and the way Gary Parrish <laughs> describes it you know John goes in walks up this, uh, shaking hands with all the other coaches uh, scouts and then sees this coach. And, you know, just can't control himself and says something to the effect that, you know, you can recruit a kid your whole life. And if I want him, I'm going to get him. And there's nothing that you can do about it because I'm because I'm me. <laughs> I mean, hmm. it was just it, it, John Calipari is so ga- he brings gangster. He absolutely brings gangster to your program. And when you see him at the NBA draft, dressed up in Briani suit. I mean, it's just you're so proud to have him as the face of your program that it's just it's just something that, you know, not Shashevsky didn't doesn't bring that, you know, I mean no other coach brings that. I mean it I kinda like and like I see when he see when he went to Arkansas, the first thing I thought was Oh my gosh! I wasn't thinking so much Kentucky, but he's looking. He looks at Arkansas as Memphis. I think it, it, Memphis is a better. I think he was. It might, he was happier at Memphis than he was at Kentucky. I think he's going to be happier at Arkansas than he was at Kentucky. And you guys are going to be in for a roller coaster ride. And as I said, the pros and cons are the better that better seasons that you've got, the more offers he's going to be uh, getting coming in from the from you know from the outside, and that's. That's the concern. You're going to have the concern in the off season, and you you know the the rumors are going to start flying. John will come out and say the right thing. He said it to us. He would say something like, you know, don't listen. They're trying to rain on our party. We're having a good time here. Don't let the outside guys, you know, distract us. But anyways, John, congratulations to you guys. It's going to be a bright future. You guys are going to be, you know, the hot destination for you know any every exciting player that uh that that's going to be coming through you know the high school ranks and you guys are going to be must watch tv it's just congratulations and uh you know now i've got two teams to watch this year because i'm a uk fan but also john like yourselves i couldn't stand them at memphis i could not stand them when when kansas Chalmers hit that shot at Kansas. I mean, I was on my feet. I could not stand it. But it's what the funny thing about John is once he's on your team, he's he's your favorite personality in in you know in all of college sports. So congratulations again, John. I can look forward to watching you over the coming years. Well, Greg, we appreciate you calling in and watching in, man. That's a great phone call, and we appreciate it. And thank you for uh Listening in and uh, subscribing to the show here at Natty State Sports. You know, uh, I think that, you know, we, we like to do some playful banter, but I think, you know, Greg's one of those guys that gets it. He, he gets it that it's it's about the, the excitement factor in, in the pomp and circumstance. And he was brought, talking about, like, you know, one of the things that they were always afraid to lose him at Kentucky. You know, I that's what I want from. I want that fear. I want that fear. I want a fear that my coach is going to get taken. Because when you have that fear, that means you have a great coach. And when you have a great coach, you have success. And when you have success, people want it. And so they're going to try to poach them. So great call, Greg. Really appreciate you calling in and, and uh, talking about it and bringing it up with us, too. We'll get your Arkansas update. Let's see if we can get to uh, Hayden, I believe, is calling in. What's up, Hayden? Hey, what's up, John? How are you? I am great, man. How about yourself? Well, I'm I'm great this week. <laughs> yeah, it makes it a lot better. Um, I'm I'm out in Midland, Texas. I just moved here from Dallas, but went to U of A, graduated in 2016. Um, I'm so excited, and I wanted to ask you a question and get your expertise. But <clears throat> if you had rewound three weeks ago, and you said, "Hey, you can either keep Musk and move forward exactly as is." which in my opinion wasn't a horrible spot to be, or you can get Coach Cal. Um, I'm just curious, which, which do you think you would have done? If I look back, I think <laughs> at that time I would have said must, and I would have been wrong. Um, I feel so great about the Cal hire, and, yeah, I just wanted to get your perspective and see. 
Yeah, yeah. Appreciate the phone call, Aiden. Um, I would say that if you gave me that choice, it's always hindsight, but if you gave me that choice, I would probably say Cal, to be honest. Because, and I love Muss. Like, I'm, I'm a, I was a huge fan of Muss and love what Muss did and what he brought. But, you know, it, it kind of just always felt like at the end it was it was it was it was done it was done for if you would have asked me after Arkansas beat Kansas in the Sweet 16 and everything like at that point I would have said must or I would have said yeah stick with must and keep that going absolutely but after this past season kind of seeing how things went seeing how the the toxicity of everything it just felt like you know what a change wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But it's a great question, though. Hindsight's twenty twenty; It always is. But I probably would have taken the Cal angle. Because Cal's a big time, man. He's, he brings it in. There's no doubt that he has the excitement level that people just don't really understand and may not ever get a chance to understand, too. So, All right, folks. I got to tell you here for your Arkansas update, brought to you by Davis & Garrett Insurance, your independent auto owner's insurance agency, curing what matters most that Razorback football. Uh, we know the Cal stuff is still going on, but the Razorback football angle, not only is the red-white game happening tomorrow at noon at Razorback Stadium, all fans are invited to attend, but it was announced that the Razorback football season opener against UAPB has moved up. That's right. It's moved up. It was originally scheduled for the very first Saturday of the football season, which... You know, it's kind of common. It's not unheard of. But they have moved it up now to Thursday. August 29th, Thursday at 6.30 p.m. is when the game's going to kick off on ESPNU at War Memorial Stadium. It's been a long time since Arkansas has played a Thursday night game. I believe the last time was Brett Bielma 2017 against Florida Atlantic or Florida International. One of the two. But they played on Thursday night down in Little Rock for that one. And I love this. I know people can say whatever they want. I love it because that's going to open up to where it's going to be so many great games on Saturday that you'll still be able to watch. Memorial Day weekend, which is that weekend, is going to be incredible because you don't have to worry about the travel or anything like that. Uh, last year was a disaster at War Memorial Stadium because of the heat in the middle of the day. Won't have to worry about it as much this time around because it is at night. It's a night game at 630. So later in the day makes it a lot better but I'm all for this I love it I cannot speak enough about that and think about you're going to go to a football game on Thursday Friday you're going to talk about it and react to it and then you have a three-day weekend so kudos and shout out to ESPNU as well as Razorback football for getting this done so that's happening also Razorback baseball it's going to continue on, which we'll talk with Tyler Spoon here in just a little bit but Razorback baseball is going to continue on on the road tonight uh, as you know, it's kind of unfortunate since they've won 23 straight home games, but they're going to have the SEC slate continuing on against Alabama tonight. That game is going to be at 6 p.m. on SEC Network Plus. In fact, all the games this weekend against Alabama are going to be on the SEC Network Plus. Tonight it's at 6. Tomorrow is a night game at 5, which is kind of unique. And then 1 p.m. on Sunday, and Alabama's ranked 25th in the nation. So going to be another top 25 matchup. We'll see if Arkansas can continue on their winning streak as well as their SEC prowess. And Alabama's a good team. Can't take them lightly, but should be a great one there in Tuscaloosa. And that is your Arkansas update brought to you by Davis and Garrett Insurance, your independent auto owner's insurance agency, securing what matters the most. All right. So what we'll do is we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll welcome in former Razorback Tyler Spoon and talk to him about the Razorback baseball team going up against Alabama and where they stand right now. So stay with us here on the John Neighbor Show live from Natty State Sports Studios. We're not done yet either. So don't be satisfied because we're not done. Hey, hey John, uh, Bob Polk, Arkansas Democrat. Is that I added two part of that's okay. You mentioned Arkansas. Eric, um, why do you always talk about Arkansas? But go ahead. Well, why do you always talk about Kentucky? <laughs> <laughs> You missed it. You missed it. You missed it. Just tell me you missed it. I'm not going to go there with you. Why not? And that will be the last question I answer with that hat on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. That is why Arkansas is fantastic. Yes, sir. 
you know, and, and I like, you know, I didn't like the game, but I'm glad I was able to walk off the floor again and deep inside and have that funny feeling that, hey, one more time, Horn. Best guys, uh, I know it's a tough time for you. Uh, the coach is gone, but you got a new coach now, and you got to listen to what he says. Okay, I know you're thinking, oh, who is this new guy? Where's the other guy that crashed the motorcycle? We like him better. He was cool or whatever. Forget about all that. Listen to the new coach and get out there and win some games. Oh, brother, this guy stinks. You guys act like it's... Pick it up a little bit. Okay? Get your chin up. Smile. Smile. Okay? Dang, you guys, all right? If not, I'm not talking. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Big red. Oh, oh. Guys, I've got just one thing I want to say to you. Touchdown, Arkansas! I was a teacher today. Told those boys. Welcome to the SEC. Well, Fayetteville is 1,843 miles away, but the call of the Hawks can be heard all the way to San Francisco. Let's dig my dick in the mashed potato. Go Hawks. Powered by Arkansas for Arkansas. Every time you put a mic in my face, I'm going to say Arkansas. The John Neighbor Show is live from the Natty State Sports Studios. <laughs> All right, welcome back into the John Neighbor Show here live from Natty State Sports Studios. Appreciate everybody listening and watching in on this beautiful day here in the great state of Arkansas. And as always, we appreciate you for making us a part of your afternoon this afternoon. And we're going to have Tyler Spoon on here in just a second. But before we do, folks, got to tell you about our friends over at Alumni Hall with Razorback Baseball gearing up still. Going to have a home series here in a couple weekends that gives you plenty of time. Because Alumni Hall is the place for all of your Razorback apparel needs. Men, women, kids, pets, decorations. They have all of the nicest brands. Columbia, Nike, Southern Tide, Peter Millar, Johnny O. They have it for you. The Razorback excitement is at its all-time high. So if you're going to be excited about it, might as well wear your excitement with some of their great apparel over there at Alumni Hall. You can visit the website at nattystatesports.com slash alumni hall. And browse their catalog that way. I know sometimes it's tough, especially if you're outside of the city of Fayetteville, which apparently is the second worst city in the SEC. But if you're outside the city of Fayetteville, it may be tough to get up there sometimes. But that's okay because of on their online store, they have their full catalog. You can order it and have it delivered straight to your door, no problems. And you can have it all ready, set, and to go for the next Razorback event that you're going to be a part of. So please get on top of that. Make that happen. Go over to nattystatesports.com. Slash Alumni Hall. It is the ultimate Razorback shopping destination with Alumni Hall. All right. We always enjoy our time with Tyler Spoon, former Razorback. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hear from him. What he thinks about the Razorback baseball team as well as John Calipari as well. All right, right now we are always joined by one of our very special guests to talk a little bit Razorback baseball because, yes, folks, that does still exist, and they are still number one in the country. So let's go ahead and talk a lot more about it as we go ahead and welcome in our in-studio guest. It is one of our favorites, former Razorback Tyler Spoon, thanks to the Bank of Fayetteville here in downtown Fayetteville. And, Tyler, appreciate you joining us as always, man. How you doing? Man, I'm doing good. Excuse the allergies this week. It's going to be a little nasally. No, that's okay. We'll I push mean, through it, it. It is that time of year, unfortunately. Yes. It does get to that point. So, But either way, um, we, we, there is baseball. And we, we, we may talk a little basketball, too, at the end, because I want to get your thoughts on it, too. But oh, yeah. Arkansas Razorback baseball, 23 straight wins at home. They are 11-1 and one in SEC play. They have a big series against Alabama, which every series is big in the SEC. But, I mean... I, I, I'm getting t- kind of to the point where I'm like, what else can we say about this team right now? They've got a long season in front of them, but they just keep finding ways to win. Yeah. It's almost a little too good. <laughs> yeah, I don't it's know. Like, it's yeah. like, yeah, let's, you know, I, I don't, I never want to lose, but like, let's start to look a little bit bad maybe <laughs> yeah. for a second. Like give it, give it three weeks. Let's play some bad baseball and then get back to it. I don't know. But, um, but it, it, again, it's crazy. Like the offense has been, good not great still and you know so they're still as crazy as it is i feel like this team has still not reached its full potential so it's you know pitching staff i feel like it's i I don't know you can't do anything else so 
Um, yeah, super impressive to say the least. I mean, it's twenty eight and three. It's crazy. Yeah, it's like, crazy. I, I that's why like I know people see a number one team and and everything, and we've seen Arkansas be a number one team. You know, twenty twenty one seemed like the entire season they were number one mm-hmm. and they won every SEC series. And I am still not going to say that's happening this year. I'm, I'm not yeah. going to. That's just so so rare. But I again, I'm just I'm hard pressed to look at the schedule. And to look at the teams Arkansas is playing and just be like, yeah, it's probably one they're going to lose. Just that's that's how yeah. good they're looking. And and it's not even like they're just winning games and they're blowing everybody out. They're winning in different ways. They're coming from behind. They're getting into a point to where the the defense or the pitching may have a not a bad game, but just something yeah. to where they struggle a little bit. The offense comes through or the offense isn't there, but the defense is coming through clutch hitting in, in crucial times. Big plays. I mean, Nolan Souza's out here looking like a, a, a senior and a guy that's ready for the big leagues right now. I mean, they just keep finding different ways to win. And I think that's also what's so much more encouraging about this team and the possibility of them not only going to Omaha, but also being the best team in the country right now and possibly could win it all. Yeah, it's it's just up and down. Like, and that just speaks to the depth. You know, Souza was a guy that didn't play much to start the year. And you know, again, we talked about it, you know, they didn't know if the development would quite hit this year. You know, it's still, he's just 18, 19 years old. He's a kid. And so it's like, it's not common for it to hit so quick and it just snapped. So, uh, but has solidified himself in the middle of that lineup. So, which is someone we're going to need, but you know, you look at Arkansas and you, know, you just think about s- series moving forward. It's just like, it's almost like Arkansas starts every series with a one Oh lead just from the start. Cause it's like, and Hagen may not lose a game. Yeah. It's just like, that's just the reality. You know, it, you got to think he's going to have his, I mean, he's had two, you know, bad outings and given up two runs. Yeah. How dare him? Crazy. <laughs> but um, you, you would think that at some point he's going to give up four or five, which, you know, is just normal for a, you know, someone that's a human being to do at some <laughs> point, you know, not his, but he, uh, man, it's just like they start every series go one Oh, and they just have to win one of two, and that's that's it. And it's just, you know, they end up winning all three. But it's just a team that just, when you look at the depth and the bullpen especially, it's just one after another, after another, after another. It's just no, there's no quit in this team. And the lineup too, it's just, again, the, the potential is to, has still not been reached, I feel like. So it's scary what this team could be, um, but it's also kind of a little scary how good they've been so far. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know how you felt about it. We always compare it to 2021 because that's the year yeah. that they were number one. And I know that it didn't end the way that everyone wanted it to. But I was I was talking to a, a buddy of mine where looking at that team and looking at this year's team, there is a difference, obviously, for many reasons. But like that team, I felt like every series was just a battle. And you're just yeah. like, all right, let's get to the seventh inning in this clutch game and then have a lead and mm-hmm. have cops come in. Like that, yeah. that kind of felt like the vibe. But this is a team that... They, like there's nobody close to them in the, in the country right now. And I'm sorry, but they, there's no team that looks as good that has as much depth mm-hmm. that has as, is a complete team like this yeah. team. And that's where it's like, you, you're saying like, I, you know, it's a little too good right now. And I agree, but even these midweek games, when you think they would, would ah, we take off, you know, we're getting more focused. They're dominating these games too. It's almost like every time they come to play, they play to win regardless of who's pitching, regardless of who's in the lineup everybody is high quality, high talent, and they do not want to lose regardless of the opponent. And they do not have any let down in them. Yeah, no, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, again, it's just scary. Yeah. I mean, there's no other way to put it. And, you know, people have talked about Clemson, you know, could arguably be the number one. And I'm like, you know, they're really offensive, but I would love to see us face the, the lineup with our, our pitching staff and um, not speaking anything bad about Clemson's offense, but, you know, it's just, the pitching staff we have is just a different animal. And so what I think we'll learn a lot when we play Texas Mm A&M, that's, that's the team to me that I think is you have Arkansas at one gap and then you have Texas A&M and maybe a little bit of a gap and then someone else. But I think they're the closest right now to Arkansas. But I think, yeah, it's, that's going to be a real test. You know, in Arkansas, honestly, so far, you know, you never know when you're going to schedule the season, but they've had a fairly easier uh, sec schedule you know but you wouldn't expect your Ole Miss to just be terrible uh mizzou it is what it is yeah. but lsu swept them um they're, st- they're still probably going to be a good team and end up making a run but um you just look up and down i mean it could be a deal where we've just made teams look really bad and made it look like an easy schedule 
uh, kind of like Dan Hurley said, we just make a hard tournament look like an easy <laughs> one. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm curious that Texas A&M series. I'm I'm really really excited for and Kentucky too. That's, yeah, uh, that's we a- also have Kentucky on the schedule and like twelve and one in conference. I don't care how easy your schedule is. You have to be good to take care of business. Tw- go twelve and one. So. Uh, we still got two really, really big ones. And then obviously you got Florida in there. You got, do we play Georgia this year? No, no Georgia, no Georgia. this year. Yeah. Um, Mississippi state. Uh, uh, no, we are playing Auburn. Anyway, we got some really good teams left. So it's yeah. going to be a, a fun stretch down the end. And yeah, I'm not saying I want us to lose a, a series ever, but I wouldn't be terribly upset if we dropped one or two series in the next month or so, just make us look normal. And yeah. then it's like, okay, let's, let's get hot at the end. Cause so. I don't like, I'm, I was just thinking about, I'm not saying they would, but if they did win every SEC series again, I'm like, I hate this. I hate this so much. <laughs> it's like, I do not want this. I don't want that type of success. But, but you, you know, if you're Dave Van Horton, if you're this team, you're not going to be like, hey, guys, let's drop a game. You know, yeah. like they're going to continue Never. to fight and, and continue to play hard. Um, now, this past weekend, sweeping Ole Miss, I know that probably felt pretty good to you and watching mm-hmm. that. Was pretty, and I think everybody enjoyed that part of it. But what from this past series, what really stood out to you as far as not only just sweeping them and doing what they do, but something that you were really impressed by uh, in all three games and what they were able to accomplish. I think the thing that makes me the most happy was that Ole Miss just stinks. <laughs> yeah, they're just helps. bad. Yeah, so they're just, you know, they're okay. <laughs> they're, they're a, you know, low middle of the pack SEC team. Mm-hmm. They're just, they just weren't very good, you know, bottom line. So, um, but again, I'm just so impressed. It's just, it's hard to get more impressed and, you know, you start to become numb to it, but just this this pitching staff, it just it's just crazy. Again, Hagen's had you know had two bad outings his last two weeks, giving up two runs, gone six innings, and still double digit strikeouts in each one. So, you know, I I, I don't know. And there's so much to be impressed with. Obviously, no one Souza. I mean, man, the guy just continues to impress and just like get better and better and better. And he's a guy that, man, he's going to be. You, you know, you look at next year, you hopefully. Everything stays the same, but you have him and Vahiva in the middle infield, and that looks really, really good. So, um, but I think Souza to me is going to play just a key part of the offense moving forward. I think you know he's going to kind of be the engine. I mean, he's you know Stovall. I think we're also kind of getting numb to Stovall of how good he is, and he's just been on a tear ever yeah. since he's come back. He's from batting three fifty. I mean, he's yeah, getting so, after it. Um, and I think a lot, it's one of those deals where people just expect him to be good, but we got, you know, you got to appreciate how good he is. And so, um, but the other guy, you know, it hadn't been impressive so far, but Kendall Diggs is, you got to think he's going to turn it around at some point. Like he's not, he's not playing great right now. That's no secret. I mean, he just hadn't hit like to his potential, but if that guy gets going like he can, I really like where offense is. So, um, I think our offense again, it just seems like every week we're just taking small steps, in the right direction to where we're going to score six to 10 runs a game, which is where an elite offense usually stands. So, you know, I want to go back to the Sousa thing. This is going to sound really weird, mm-hmm. but you talk about him being a true freshman. I, I didn't realize just how big he is. He yeah. came in here a few weeks ago for uh, the bombastic podcast. And I'm like, that guy, he's like six, three, two thirty five, yeah. And he has no facial hair. He has no five o'clock shadow. I'm like, I, this guy may be still growing. He may get, <laughs> still be getting bigger, but like it's, when you have like a player of that size and then like, you know, you mentioned a Lloyd too, he's a big old guy too. Yeah. And that's in your infield, you know, it, it's, you know, you've had great players and not saying you have to be just these big physical prowess to be able to uh, be good at baseball. But I just feel like Arkansas over overall never really had a whole lot of those types of guys. Like maybe besides pitchers. I mean, in fact, pitchers always been big, but it just seems like they're, they're I don't know if they're growing differently out there in Hawaii or something like that, but those are, those are young guys that are just fitting the part. They're massive dudes, and that's where it's just almost scary to think about the type of power that they could continue to develop and continue to have. Yeah, Sousa, Sousa's just an absolute, you know, they call him the great god. You know, it's just like he's just a physical specimen. I mean, it's just, yeah, good for him. That's, yeah. you know, not everybody can be born. And, you know, that's just, if I'm a scout, you're just drooling over a guy like Sousa because he's got everything, you know, the, the size, the power, the athleticism, you know, plays middle infield i mean could move him over to short um left-handed bat for plus power i mean just everything you dream up dream of in a prospect and but he was the same way though i mm-hmm. mean it's just yeah just start pulling all those white hawaiian kids and just put them on the university of arkansas so um yeah it's it's fun to watch i i'm i've been couldn't be more impressed with those guys and it just seems yeah 
trying again. I try not to yeah, speak. I'm I very superstitious about stuff, <laughs> but it seems like those two are probably going to be leading the charge moving forward. And I hope that continues. And I think, you know, if those two are going at the same time, it's going to be really tough to beat us. Speak with Ty, uh, Tyler Spoon, former Razor back here on the John Neighbor Show. Thanks to the Bank of Fayetteville here in downtown Fayetteville. Uh, I, I'm curious about this because we're getting close, I guess, to is there's been four series, five series. It's hard to keep up. Sorry, this yeah. week is with Cal stuff has been crazy. That's but, right, baby. But, but about midweek, uh, midway through the SEC season, we'll say. Um, if you're looking at maybe two different ways of looking at like, has there been a player you've been surprised by because how, how great they've been? And is there a player you've been surprised by that maybe – not playing as much or maybe not, not really getting it going as, as much as you were expecting? I'll do one of each. Okay. Um, I'll do, I, I think for me, delightfully surprised by McIntyre oh, because yeah. I, you know, I knew he was going to be good. He's just, you know, steady, eddy, consistent. You knew what you're going to get, but to do, to be as good as he has consistently is a different story. You know, I, I figured he'd have like a, two and a half to three and a half ERA, but you know, what's, what's he sitting at right now? I mean, he's got to be up. So is he sub two ERA? Yeah, I'm, I think I'm, he's sub two last time I checked. So yeah. he, but it's just nails every time, every time he comes in, it's like, it's, it's almost, it's not the same feeling as we had when cops came in the game, but it's like, all right, Max in like, let's roll. Like we got a good chance. So, um, I'm delightfully surprised by how good he's been, you know, happy to see it for him, you know, fifth year guy, fourth year guy, just from Arkansas. Fun to see, but I think the one I've been a little bit disappointed with, you know, and I think it's still in there and it could come around. It's just Hudson White. I thought I had really high expectations for him. Um, and again, and I, he obviously can do it. He's proven he's done right. it in the big 12. Like it's not that he can't do it. You know, it's just, I think I, you know, he was our leadoff guy two hole to start the year. The expect, expectations were really high. So um, I definitely expected a little bit more out of him. And again, it may roll. It may come around at any point. You never know when we look up and he's hitting three or four hole by the end of the year. But, and I hope that happens, but um, yeah, there's still, you know, no, there's, there's still some gas in the tank probably that, you know, hopefully he comes around and starts hitting really well. And I, I know we're keep talking about how this team can win it all and, and, and everything, but what will keep this team from doing this? Like, what is the thing that will keep this team from making the world series and winning it all? What's, what's the good thing that's going to keep it from doing that? It's going to be the same thing as us in 2013 where we just don't hit enough. You know, I mean, bottom line, you know, it, Again, not saying that the offense is bad, but it's a lot of it sometimes just, you know, you, again, you get hanging on Friday. It's just like as an offense, it's crazy when you just have as a whole an offense has this mindset and this mentality of like, hey, we got to score runs. We got to like, we got to come out and we got to, in 2015, that was the mindset we eventually took. And, it, you know, our pitcher staff was good, but like, you know, we were, our mindset was, hey, we got to, we got to score six, seven runs a game. Um, but you get, you also go back to 2013 and it was like, Hey, let's just score four runs and you got Barrett or Stanek or Fant on the mound. We're going to win this game. And so you can, you almost just get to this point where you're just like, let's just score a few runs, just enough to get the job done. Then you look up in regionals and you know, everyone's just scrapping and Hagen's given up one hit and they somehow have three runs, four runs. Um, and you got to score runs and you get behind and you're just like, well, crap, we're, yeah. you know, we're in a hole. So, I think just we got it. We got to keep the pedal pedal down. Um, just focus on scoring as many runs as possible, and not let that complacency just creep into where it's like, oh, I don't. Yeah, we got Hagen or we got you know Tiger or Molina on the mound. We don't have to worry about scoring a ton of runs. So, hope that's probably what will keep us from it. And hopefully that doesn't happen. So yeah, I don't know that the frustrations with runners in scoring position has always always been something that they've mm -hmm. been trying to work on. Seems like it's improving, but. Uh, you know, we talk about the talent level, and I, th I think we've discussed it, that just right now and over this past five-year stretch, this has been the peak, the pinnacle, the prime of Dave Van Horn and his yeah. teams. He's always been a great coach. We know that. I mean, he's been to World Series in 04, 09, 2012, 2015. Like, it, it's happened, but why do you, what has happened over the past five, six-year stretch with Razorback Baseball that's made this program, made Dave Van Horn, made every this team each and every year, be where it's at like did something just click did something just happen like how did it get to this point to where again always been good but seems like over the past five six years it's just been next level yeah. elite it almost seems like it, to me it almost seems like ever since benny won the golden spikes and then you had cops do it again it just seems like guys are you know it, you had that and then really i think the biggest factor is you look at our facilities you bring it all you got to do is bring a kid here it's all you got to do. I mean, you bring a kid here, show them the facilities, show them, bring them to a game. You know, you show an 18, you know, take an 18 year old kid, 
go down fraternity row, sorority row. Um, they're, they're here, you know, so it, our facilities, the setup here, and then you have coach Hobbs, you know, and then coach Thompson and coach. Yeah. Moore. I mean, it's just like the staff is unbelievable and just proven track record. So I think just a combination of, you know, I think maybe Benny won the golden spikes, maybe started the snowball a little bit. Um, and then, you know, just, you know, 2018 making the national championship and then going, you know, consistently being in Omaha over and over and over and the draft picks, it's just a combination of everything. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's, it's hard to say one thing, but it just seems like, you know, maybe, you know, in 2015, once we made it then, it just seems like when Benny go, won the golden spikes, was getting all this attention and everything. It's just like, I don't know. It seemed like Arkansas got on the map a little bit more and just kind of took off from there. So I've, I've always loved Dave Van Horn's speeches. I find that so interesting, or at least the stuff we see, yeah. you know, on, on video and everything on social media. And I haven't watched all of them from the beginning of time. Of course, you heard every every game that you were there. But does it always get the vibe, like at least for me, when after these games and then they win, it's not that he's casual about it, but it's mm -hmm. just like, hey, guys, great job. Nice win. Like it's almost like it's an expectation and he understands how difficult it is to win. Yeah. So when they do win, it's a very he's not he's not like saying, hey, we got to keep it going. You know, don't get don't get complacent. It's just good job guys you guys did what you're supposed to do and moving on it just seems like there's a very business as usual yeah very approach to where he's almost treating them like pros i feel like just pro guys where it's like hey you know what you're supposed to do mm -hmm. and if you get the win we're, we're good like let's just move on is that yeah. how he's always been or does it seem like maybe there's a little bit more of that with this particular team i think he's been he's been like that a lot where it's it's more of a business approach where it's like you know you're here you're here to you know succeed and you're here to do well uh, that's what his expectations are and that's how he coaches that's how you know he manages the team um but yeah it's just more or less just like hey you won two out of three against you know an Ole Miss team that was bottom half of the SEC you know nice job that's what you're supposed to do you know that's congrats but um yeah it, it, but you also you know it just does something to you as a player when a coach you know you beat LSU at home and you sweep them and they're reigning national champions it's just like and coach is like, hey, nice job. You know, that's what we're supposed to do. Um, there's something about it that mentally just kicks in your mind where it's like, we're better than these guys. Yeah. Like, we're, we're, we are the, we are the dogs. Like, everyone's coming after us. You know, we're the hunted. We used to be the hunter. We are 100% the hunted, have been for a few years now. So, um, and I think just keeping that mindset of like, hey, this is what we're supposed to do is, is good. And, you know, and maybe it's also, he's just, He's just running out of things to say, and it's like <laughs> he's waiting. He's he's waiting for us to lose and lose a series where he can, you know, get after somebody a little bit. But um, yeah, it's just he, he just does such a good job. It's just keeping everyone level headed, understanding like it's not a big deal. No, twenty eight and three sounds really good. It's great. Congrats, great, you know, great accomplishment. But no one cares what you do in the first half of the year. So we've got a long way to go. You know, let's be let's be in Omaha, last team standing when it matters most. So. Speaking with former Razorback Tyler Spoon here on the John Neighbor Show, thanks to the Bank of Fayetteville in downtown Fayetteville. Uh, Tyler, I want to ask you just about the SEC in general. We know Arkansas is the, the creme de la creme right now, uh, but just how do you look at the whole landscape of the conference? Uh, a and M's really good. You mentioned Kentucky; that's been doing a good job. But uh, just where do you think it all sets and how it all places out, and maybe some things that you've taken away from it? Yeah, I think the SEC is going to come down to that weekend between Arkansas and A and M. I think those are the two best teams in the SEC. Uh, you you know, and then not to, I know Kentucky's 12 and one. That's not to discredit Kentucky. I just, I think for me, you know, seeing a and M play and seeing Kentucky play, it seems like there's just, even though the record says differently, there's a little bit more in that a and M team than there is on that Kentucky team. And, you know, I may be, I may be proven wrong. I'm who knows, but, um, again, the Kentucky team is playing really good right now. Um, but that a and M, they just got the star power. They've got the arms, they've got the bullpen, um, it seems like to me those that's the kind of team that is a little bit more suited for an Omaha run and for a championship run. And, you know, they're going to match up really, really well with Arkansas. Um, but I think, it, you know, like, like I talked about, it's Arkansas, I think Gap, A&M, and that small Gap, I think it's Vandy and Kentucky. Those are the two teams that, you know, I would put behind A&M right now. So, which we're going to find out this weekend, Vandy and A&M, who, you know, who's better right now. So, um, but Vandy, you know, Coach Corbin too, never doubt those guys coach Corbin is an unbelievable coach knows how to win it obviously knows how to win a championship um you know has coached some of the best players in the game so yeah that's it seems like that's how it's shaking up Florida 
Yeah, freaking dude, Florida, man. Dude, getting swept by, I by Missouri. What is going on over there? <laughs> the most Florida thing of all time is they're going to get swept at Mizzou, and yep. then they're going to sweep the next six series that they have and <laughs> find a way to be a national seed. That's just how... That's just Florida. They're just the weirdest team ever. But O'Sullivan always has them playing well when it matters most. So, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Um, those are the four teams right now to me that that they're the top dogs, top tier, top echelon of the SEC right now. And I think the SEC is going to come down to A and M and Arkansas that weekend. Whoever whoever wins that weekend, I think is going to win the SEC. So well, uh, is it Schlossnagel, is that how you say his name? Yeah, Over Schlossnagel there at, at, at TCU. Yeah. There, yeah, that was at TCU. Now it came to A&M. That's kind of the thing where, you know, again, SEC's always had great coaches, but it felt like once Jay Johnson went to LSU from Arizona and then Schlossnagel came from TCU to A&M, um, you know, those are two programs that's always been set up. And I'm not trying to hate on A&M. Don't, don't get me wrong. Maybe I am. But, like, that's a, that's a program just not in baseball but in everything. There's oh. It just doesn't make sense why they're not awesome and things but and maybe this year's the thing in baseball i know they went to the world series a couple years ago when arkansas did but that's a program baseball wise like football whatever basketball whatever but baseball that should be a great baseball program each and every year yeah i mean the, the talent they have in texas and you know kids want to go to a and you know kids in texas want to go to texas first and then a and second but that's you know that's the truth but yeah. a lot of those kids don't go to texas so um but yeah, and you, know, you add in the NIL situation, you know, A&M should always have one of the best teams yeah. ever, forever. But uh, let me also uh, need to apologize to Mr. Vitello and the boys over at Tennessee. They are also, I think they're right there with A&M. I, so I apologize. I yeah. completely ran over Tennessee. No disrespect. They're a very, very good ball, ball you know, baseball right. team. So um, <laughs> I'm looking forward. I know, and I know them in Kentucky, usually when they play, it's, it's some, there's some, you know, there's some words exchange. Some fireworks. And, fireworks so I'm, I'm looking forward to that one too but uh my apologies <laughs> to the tennessee volunteers i know that coach you've probably, is probably listening to this you've right probably, now. you've <laughs> probably never heard an arkansas Razorback say sorry tennessee volunteers but i'm saying it so <laughs> um but yeah i think you know a&m is just again they have no excuse to ever be bad um you know it's you're gonna have a down year here and there but slosh is a great coach took to see you to a lot of omaha runs and you know it's he you know he's just now he's given access to a little bit more resources so um I fully expect Schloss is going to keep A&M at a very high level from here on moving forward. And I think this could be a marquee year for him. Uh, you know, you could look up and they're, they're in the national championship. You know, that they're that good. You know, you could see Arkansas in the national championship, Tennessee in the national championship. So there's Bandy, it, there's just so many teams in the SEC that you're just like, man, these are really good teams. Yeah. It's probably just going to be like another four out of the eight. Like it is every year. It seems like three yes. or four out of the eight is always yes. SEC teams. And there's a lot of talent there too. Um, now we, let's get down to brass tacks here because I know you're a big basketball guy, Absolutely, big basketball guy. Absolutely. And I, and I want to give credit where credit is due here on this show right now, <laughs> that when the news about John Calipari was starting to leak out and, uh, you know, give credit to Wes Moore, uh, Fox 16, he's the first one that tweeted about it. Not only just tweeted about it, but said it was happening. Like one, just like, Oh, there's thing it's happening. That was the first thing I saw. The second person that I heard from that said it was Cal Perry is Tyler Spoon. I don't know. I'm not going to ask for your sources, but yep. you got some good ones apparently. It, it was a good but, one. But when you saw that, text me about it, and and you heard it, and now seeing that it's 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 happened, he's here. The press conference has happened. Just how how do you feel about this, man? Like, I mean, how do you feel? Probably like most Razorback fans, I just I still feel like this whole week I'm in the middle of a dream. It's not actually happening. I'm trying to like wrap my mind around it, but yeah, it was man just a good friend of mine that, you know, again, he never says anything about, he lives in El Paso, never says anything about really? Arkansas sports, but just really well connected in the Apparently basketball so. world here. And Texas at like one o'clock, they were one thirty that day. And it, you know, the news broke Saturday night. He texts us. He's like, Cal Pari, done deal. Tyson's paying for it. And I'm like, whatever you say, man. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> let's get Dan Hurley as his assistant. You know, let's, <laughs> yeah. let's throw it all. I'm like, whatever you say. Well, it kept, you know, kept hearing more noise and seeing more chatter about it. And then next thing you know, I saw Wes Moore's deal, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, you were right. Like, and, you know, he he's like, told you, I got my people. They know. <laughs> they know. So I'm like, whatever. You, yeah, you may have gotten lucky. But, no, he, he, again, never says anything, and he was spot on, and I just refused to believe it or tell anybody. Yeah, it's just like went from Chris Beard to, you know, somebody a lot of people nobody Chris heard Jans, of yeah Daryl Walker and you know great coaches but like not someone I was going to get excited yeah, for. yeah it's not moving the needle no yeah no it, it, you, if there was one coach if you could tell me I could pick one coach at college basketball like 
besides Dan Hurley, yeah. that to, to take as your head coach, I would say John Calvary. Like, just not even, you know, one, and I get he may not have had the success he's had. You know, yeah, he's only got one national championship. Only one, you know. He, he, <laughs> but the Cal effect is real. Like, five-star prospect, five-star prospect. Everyone's so – I always look at a coach by the guys that – they have coached in the past and what they have to say about them. And every one of those guys that Cal's coached, you know, anyone that's run through Kentucky, and you look at all the dang players in the NBA. I think, I think 53 draft picks. It's crazy. And, you know, a lot of them are, you know, Anthony Davis, Devin Booker. I mean, you get superstars. It's yeah. not a, it's not just like, oh, they just got their cup of coffee in the NBA. These are superstars in the NBA. Um, they are all so loyal and speak so highly of Cal. And that's, that to me says so much about a coach and, you know, I, I'm, I'm couldn't be more as a, as a kid from Arkansas could not be more the the biggest hire of anything I've ever experienced in in my life. So I'm just like, I'm trying to just grasp the reality yeah. of it. I, I was trying to think of any sort of comparison just in college sports in general. And I mean, there, I'm not saying that there's not been because sometimes we just live in the moment. Like yeah. when Nick Saban got hired at Bama, that was a major deal because they didn't mm -hmm. think he was going to leave the from the NFL. Even when Petrino was hired here mm -hmm. originally as a head coach, that was a big deal because yeah. he left the Falcons and it. But it was more like almost like a negative, yeah, like impact. But you know, you talk about the Cal effect. Everybody was like, I mean, that w it was just so shocking. Yeah. Because college basketball coaches just don't do that. You know, they usually stay at their spot, and then once they're done, they retire. You know, the Coach K is Roy Williams. And the fact that he not only did that, but then in, in the manner he did, I, I kind of look at it as he is a celebrity that happens to be a college basketball coach. He's got a million and a half followers on on Twitter. And, you know, he he's coached so many great players. And and it's also weird, too, because I've hated that man for so long. And I've had to go and delete tweets. I like I just I, And now it's like... I, I don't know what it would have been more surprising. Like, it might have well said Mayor McCheese is the next head coach. Because I'm like, it's that yeah. shocking where I I'd still, I'm like you, I can't get over it. And I guess a question I have for you, people wonder, does that type of stuff impact the other athletic programs at Arkansas? Like, if something like that, like Calipari being, does that impact in the baseball program, football program? Like, is it a ripple effect throughout the athletic department? Absolutely, man. I mean, it's like... You just bring the amount of support you're going to get, and people are probably going to donate more money to NIL Edge and you know all the you know Arkansas Edge, or, and you're just going to see it spread across whatever. But you're going to get all these superstars that are going to be coming to Arkansas Razorback basketball games. Like mm -hmm. it's you may see Drake at a hog game. <laughs> Who just, knows, man? Yes. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, well, I hear we're going to see Malik Monk at a game too, so that'll be hey uh, you know interesting. What? That'll be interesting, but if yeah. anybody can mend the fence, mend, mend, mend that's the right. thing. It's Cal, Cal Perry. Perry can yeah, do it. he can so do it. It's going to be awesome, man. I, it, but you know, as a as a a football recruit, if you like basketball and like you love college basketball, whatever it is, I mean, it's like you come to a basketball game, it's and you see Coach Cal, and you know, if I'm if I'm Pittman, I'm bringing Cal Perry on my recruiting trips, you know, mm -hmm. if I can. Um, but yeah, man, it's going to ripple effect. You know, I mean baseball is just going to stay the same yeah. you know if, you know whatever but it's just going to add a little bit more fuel to the fire for recruiting to arkansas but yeah man it's it's going to be awesome you you go back to saying you know everyone used to hate cal but yeah like i said before no you don't hate a nobody nope. you nope. don't hate a nobody yeah he's he's somebody and he's got an unbelievably proven track record and the fact that again just the fact that he's a hog is just surreal it's unreal for it's people that don't understand what being a hog fan is like. This is the coolest thing that's ever happened to me. Yes. Like yeah. as far as hiring wise. Yeah. This is just, like the national champ. You won the national championship of coaching hires. Oh my like, gosh. Like you, you, you can, nobody could touch this. No, nobody can touch this. And just to see Kentucky get who they got, he may end up being great, but it ain't coach Cal. It ain't coach Cal. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, Tyler, before we let you get out of here, man, uh, bank of Fayetteville. I know you guys are, uh, always staying busy and with the weather getting a little bit warmer, man, just uh, what you guys got going on over there, man. We just got, a, we got a lot going on. I mean, we're, we're just kind of be, we're trying to be out and about in the community right now. We're always, you know, seems like we're running and gunning every day right now. But um, again, our focus always has been and always will be the people in Northwest Arkansas. And we've, we just make it an impact. Again, we, we really do have a motto at the bank, whether it's, whether you have a dollar or a million dollars, we want to take care of you. And that's, you know, it's it's a special thing you know coming being in the banking world 
I understand that, you know, bigger banks and it, it can be, it's not the case. And so having a small community bank that really cares about the people in the community and helping develop this community and the people in it, I, I, it's, it's really cool to be a part of and great people. Um, so for us right now, this, this whole year and moving forward, we're just, we're just focused on the, you know, obviously the fable is growing. It's, there's a lot of growth and we really want to be right in the middle of the growth and, you know, um, just the people and the new buildings that are going to come up left and right. And there's so much happening in Fayetteville and Northwest Arkansas. And, uh, we hope to have a huge part in it. So, um, but again, that's for us right now, that's kind of our focus, just helping the people in this community and helping it grow in the best way, way we can really. Well, former Razorback Tyler Spoon, as always, man, we appreciate you joining us. I know it's a fun time, baseball time, but even for basketball time, but either way, it's always good to catch up with you. Enjoy the weekend, man. We look forward to catching up with you next week. Cool. Appreciate it. All right, that was former Razorback Tyler Spoon joining us here on the show, and we really appreciate him being a part of it. And uh, it's always great to catch up with him and talk about baseball, as crazy as it is right now. But, folks, that does it for us here on the John Neighbors Show. Appreciate each and every one of you listening in, watching in, subscribing. This week has been awesome. So thank you so much. For Natty State Sports, we, uh, we have had a great guy, a group of guys that are killing it on the content side. And with Spring Game tomorrow, we're going to have a lot of great content from that too. And – be sure to follow Pot at the Palace for all the basketball news. When anything pops, Scotty and Curtis are going to go live, and they're going to give you all the thoughts and opinions on it. So subscribe to Natty State Sports. Thank you so much again, folks. Have a great weekend. We'll see you at the spring game tomorrow. And just remember, same sports show, same sports channel next Monday. Have a great weekend. We'll see you then.